everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be about my journey to the UK and how I built my career here as a doctor. I will also be sharing some of the challenges I faced and some tips and advice for international doctors who are looking to relocate and work in the UK. I am making this video today in association with TrueLink. I'm really excited to be working with them on this. TrueLink is the first home away from home for IMGs. It is basically a peer-to-peer -peer support platform where you can find out about NHS career pathways and your eligibility for them, review NHS hospitals, connect with other UK-based IMGs and also other trusted service providers all from one platform. So it is a great platform and something I wish was around before I started my journey here. You can have exclusive access to TrueLink right now by registering at truelink.com and also do register for their upcoming GMC registration Q&A webinar via Facebook. This webinar is held in partnership with the GMC itself, so it is going to be a great event. I will leave both links in the description box down below. This video is going to be part of TrueLink's IMG success stories. I do have to mention that I am not technically an IMG because I graduated from a UK medical school. So my journey will be slightly different compared to other international doctors who have studied abroad and came to the UK after completing their medical education. But I still think my journey is an interesting one and hopefully you'll be able to learn something from it. Before we start, let me introduce myself. I am Lavanya. I am originally from Malaysia. I'm currently working as a medical registrar here in the UK. The first part of this video will be on my journey to the UK. After completing A-levels in Malaysia, my parents and I decided that it would be best for me to pursue my medical education overseas, either in Australia, US, Canada or the UK. We chose those countries because they all have very established universities with very good medical schools and they were all English-speaking countries. Deciding between the four countries was not easy. I did not pick Canada or US mainly because medicine is a postgraduate degree there so I will be in university a lot longer and therefore it will cost me a lot more. We had a limited budget at that time, so it was not ideal to study in those countries. Australia and the UK were my next two choices. Honestly, both countries were equally good. However, I did not choose Australia mainly because of timing and when their university term starts. If I had gone to Australia, I would be losing a year. Medical school is already so long, so I did not want to unnecessarily prolong my medical education. Also, another main reason I chose the UK is I do have family and close friends living in the UK, so I felt that I would have more support by coming here. My top tips for students who want to pursue their medical education abroad is choose a country where you can speak the local language. Medical school or even medical postgraduate education is not easy and it will be less stressful and a much better use of your time if you focus on the medical curriculum rather than learning the language. The second tip is Choose a country where you already know someone there or have family. Starting your life or career in a new country can be a very daunting process. No matter how much information you have gathered or read online, nothing beats being welcomed by a familiar face when you land in a new country. And the last one is to try and pursue your medical education or postgraduate medical education in a country where you eventually want to work and settle. Starting your career as a newly graduated doctor can be challenging and it will be even more difficult to do it in a country where you're not familiar with the healthcare system 
or the local culture. Once I've decided on the UK, I looked into applying to a few different medical schools. I didn't really know what I was doing at that time and my knowledge about the UK was very limited. So I spoke to friends who were already studying medicine there and looked up the Times Good University Guide. The Times Good University Guide is a good place to start if you're trying to select potential universities to apply to. I applied to four universities, Manchester, Newcastle, Kings and Aberdeen. Knowing what I know now and after living here for some time, I would not have necessarily picked those universities. I will explain why. I would have avoided Aberdeen which is located in Scotland. Scotland and the northern parts of England can be pretty cold so I would avoid it especially if you are from a warmer climate and not used to being in a cold country. I would also avoid applying to universities in central London because the cost of living there can be high compared to other parts of the UK. For example, renting a studio apartment in central London can cost you around £900 a month. Meanwhile, renting a similar size studio apartment in York or Newcastle will only cost you around £500 a month. Thankfully, I got accepted to Newcastle University, which I think was a good choice for me. After completing medical school, I decided to stay on in the UK to do my internship, which is also known as the UK Foundation Programme. The UK Foundation Programme is normally for two years. I completed my foundation years in Nottingham and then I moved down to Surrey to do core medical training. During core medical training, I sat for the MRCP exams. After core medical training and MRCP, I applied for higher specialty training in acute medicine, which is what I am currently doing at the moment. I am almost halfway through my training. I am currently an ST4 trainee, so I have three more years before I become a consultant. Before I end this video, I thought I will mention a few tips for future doctors who want to pursue their careers in the UK. The first one, do make sure that you are fluent in English before coming to the UK. Trust me, it will make you feel a lot more confident as a doctor if you can communicate well with patients and with other colleagues. My next tip is to do at least a couple of weeks of NHS job shadowing before working here. This will help you get to know the working environment and the healthcare system here which can be a lot different compared to other countries. It will also help you get to know the UK medical guidelines and things like that. My third advice is not to focus too much on exams. Exams are important, but clinical skills and experience is far more important than exams. Most of the UK medical exam scores, like the PLAB scores and the MRCP scores, do not matter. As long as you pass, it is good enough. So don't overstress yourself preparing for those exams. UK is not like other countries where the scores make a difference and it is used in the specialty matching process. In the UK, the selection to move specialty training programs will depend on your CV and interview performance. That is all for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. I will leave a link to the TrueLink website down below and also a link to register for the upcoming webinar. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!